Yo guys, it's Sam. I hope all of you are doing well. Today, Apple released iOS 12.1.1. After a long time in beta testing, it is finally here. And although these updates are normally pretty small, only a couple of changes, as you can see, there's actually a lot to talk about here. So if you're excited for iOS 12.1.1, drop a like down below, and of course, subscribe so you don't miss any future Apple news. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so first up in FaceTime, Apple made some really big changes here and fixed some annoyances that were driving people insane since iOS 12 came out. So if I go ahead, and start a quick FaceTime call right here, you'll be able to see immediately there is a new flip camera button at the bottom. So you no longer have to go and like swipe up to do it. You can literally flip on command just by tapping that, which is super, super cool. All right, and down here is another massive, massive change. Super excited to see this back. You can now take live photos on FaceTime. As you can see, um, whoever you're calling has to have it enabled. So you can't just like take their photo without their consent. So you have to go into settings and enable that option under FaceTime. But I know a lot of people were really wondering why that was removed. Literally nobody knows, but it's back now and you can do that. So FaceTime, pretty big updates and uh, definitely some good changes that Apple made here. Next up on the iPhone 10R, this is an iPhone 10R exclusive feature. Haptic touch has been expanded. So because the screen doesn't have 3D touch, it does not actually respond to pressure or anything. You can just tap and hold on things like the camera toggle, the flashlight toggle uh, to get some expanded functionality there. It's sort of like a replacement for 3D touch that works okay. Well, in this update, they have added haptic touch support to expand notifications. Now, I haven't been able to get it working in Notification Center, so usually if you 3D touched on notifications on an iPhone, 10s, 10, 8, anything with 3D touch, these would expand from Notification Center. Here's a good example of it. So if this notification just came in on the iPhone at 10R, before you would have to go straight to the app, you could never view these buy and sell 3D touch enabled buttons. Now if you tap and hold on this notification on the iPhone 10R, you'll get these options that should pop up immediately. So glad to see Apple is already expanding the functionality for haptic touch, and they said they have more plans in the future. So I can't wait to see what they do next. Now there's also an iPad only change in iOS 12.1.1 as well. You now have the ability to hide this sidebar whenever you are in news and landscape. Before it just had to stay like this forever, but now you can tap this new button right here and the sidebar disappears. So if you really want that full screen viewing experience before, almost always you would have this sidebar and it was just kind of weird. Like it made sense sometimes, but at other times you just wanted to view everything in full screen. So that's new in iOS 12.1.1, as you can see, per that little button. So those are the biggest changes so far, but there are some smaller ones that are definitely important as well. So you now have real-time text or RTT when using Wi-Fi calling on iPad and iPod touch and stability improvements for dictation and voiceover. Both of those are accessibility features and then of course bug fixes. Hopefully some of the annoying bugs that you've been running into have been corrected. Fixes an issue where Face ID may temporarily become unavailable. I've seen that on Twitter a little bit. It just literally would say like Face ID does not work, which is so strange. Addresses an issue that prevented visual voicemail from downloading for some customers. Fixes an issue in messages that could prevent predictive text suggestions when typing on the Chinese or Japanese keyboards. Addresses an issue that could prevent voice memo recordings from uploading to iCloud. That is actually one that I did run into, so really glad to see that fixed. And finally, fixes an issue where time zones may not have updated automatically. That could be super problematic if you're going to work maybe an hour early or an hour later because your time zone did not update. Really the only question that remains about iOS 12.1.1 now that it is out for everybody is where the watchOS update is. So the macOS update is out to correspond to 12.1.1. Even tvOS update is out as well. But watchOS 5.1.2 still nowhere to be seen. According to some Apple training documents, Apple Store employees are being being trained to talk about the ECG app and it is confirmed to be in watchOS 5.1.2 when it drops. It's just not out yet. So maybe it's coming, I don't know, Thursday or Friday of this week or maybe Apple's waiting until Monday or Tuesday of next week. So to be notified when that update does drop, hopefully very soon, make sure you hit subscribe down below and of course drop a like as well. Now in iOS 12.1 to wrap this video up, there were some security changes as well and there's actually so many in such a small update, I don't even want to go through all of them and, and highlight the important ones just because if you want to read these for yourself I will leave it linked down below but know that if you want your device to be the most secure um, the most up-to-date definitely go ahead and update because there are a ton uh, an absolute ton of security changes here so I'd recommend updating pretty solid update so far I've been using it for a couple of weeks on my iPhone at 10s right here really no issues whatsoever it seems to be incredibly stable and it continues to prove that Apple has made leaps and bounds with iOS 12 and it it just gets better every single release. That's all I've got for you in this video. Drop a like again if you liked it. Subscribe for more. 
Hope you guys are doing well, and I'll see you in my next video.